Now we're going to continue our discussion of the atomic structure. Last time we looked at some basics of quantum mechanics that are going to now going to be used to apply to the electron around an atom. So first we saw how the Bohr model described the electron around the atom, but then we saw how quantum mechanics uh, changed the view of what an electron is and how that would apply in a simple system of the particle in a box. Now we're going to look at a more complicated system, which is the three-dimensional uh, atom. In the atom, you have a electron uh, around a nucleus. The nucleus has the uh, protons, the positive charge, also neutrons. And so we can describe the position of the electron around the nucleus using an XYZ Cartesian coordinate system. But as we saw in the last uh, lecture, the Schrodinger equation for that, partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z, is complicated. So what, what we can do to make it a little easier to handle is to divide up the parts of the wave function in, in, into uh, different coordinates. So we're going to do that by applying the idea of polar coordinates to the atom, because again, all, uh, everything uh, around the nucleus is what's going to help us describe the environment of the atom. So to think about what's around the nucleus, we can draw a vector. And this vector has a, has a um, distance r, radius, from the nucleus. It has an angle down from the z-axis, which is theta. And it has an angle from the x-axis here, which is phi. So now we can separate the wave function in terms of the radial portion and then the angular angular portions, which we can combine there. <clears throat> so let's look at the radial portion of a hydrogen 1s uh, orbital. Now, last time we saw the Bohr model had orbits, uh, and so we kind of retain a little bit of that by describing the electron as an orbital. Um, so we're going to, we're just looking at the radial function, so here's the radial uh, radius axis starting at zero, the nucleus, and then we're going to plot uh, the radial portion of the wave function. And with hydrogen 1s, what you have is an exponential decay. Uh, which means the maximum of the wave function is at radius equals zero. This also has the implication that uh, since it's an exponential decay, it actually never, never gets to a value of zero. It just continues on out to infinity, which implies that the electron of a hydrogen atom doesn't have an end at the hydrogen atom, but it extends out into space. Um, another interesting consequence of this uh, function is if we were to square the function, which is what's called the probability function. So r squared with respect to the radius is going to be a sharper exponential curve. And uh, this squaring of the wave function is called a prob probability function because one interpretation of quantum mechanics is that the electron is still a particle, and what we're looking at is its distribution using statistics throughout space. And so if we think about it that way, this tells us that the maximum probability of finding the electron is at the nucleus, or radius equals zero which is counterintuitive. The electron should not be stuck in the nucleus because then the negative and the positive charges would cancel out and the atom would fall apart, uh, I guess. So what uh, is going to help us make some sense of this is to remember that we're looking at a sphere. So if we put up again our Cartesian coordinates, what we're really looking at is um, the radial function. So no matter what angle we look at, we should we'll get the same value uh, 
in terms of the radial function. So we need to consider, if we're thinking about probability, we need to consider uh, the space available for that particle. And so what we're going to do is actually find out, well, what is the space of a sphere? In particular, what is the infinitesimal amount of space, or uh, the derivative of the volume of a sphere with respect to the radius, so a little slice here, and that is 4 pi r squared. So we're going to take this space uh, volume, take this volume, and multiply it by the probability function, so r squared, and then we're going to multiply it by, which is a function of r, and then we'll multiply it by 4 pi r squared, r, little r, radius squared. And that will give us our radial probability distribution function. And it is a function of multiplying this curve by this curve and getting uh, distance r, getting this curve. So here the the at zero, radius zero, space is zero. So the function has to go to zero. This function goes to zero. Then as the radius increases, it increases by a factor of two. But meanwhile, this part is decaying exponentially. So we get a increase, then a maximum, and then exponential decay. So that is the radial uh, probability distribution function, again, for hydrogen 1s orbital. And we could also plot similar for uh, functions for different uh, radial functions for 2s, 2p, etc. And we'll look at those exact formulas and, and play with them when we meet together. Uh, let's take a break and then we'll come back to talk about the angular portion of the function.